Greetings, Westerosi. I am Biderbeck, coming live from Long Lake with this special report. Faster Bowl 6. Bastard Bowl 6, Rumble for Winterfell. Here in the base camp for Jon Snow and his ragtag troop of raucous, rambunctious, rowdy raiders who are ready to rumble. Not long ago, this was the camp of Stannis Baratheon, sour-faced master of melancholy, where a sneak attack and the sacrifice of his only child, Shireen, led to the suicide of his dour wife, Selyse. This sent most of his men and sellswords running for some place, saying, making for a poor showing when he engaged the Boltons to retake Winterfell. Now we stand on the edge of an event that, for once, doesn't involve the long-coveted Iron Throne. Bastard bulls of the past have gone down in Westeros history as some of the most grueling battles ever covered. More commonly known as the Blackfire Rebellions, they were all orchestrated by Targaryen bastards, who went by the surname Blackfire. Bastard Bowl 1 Daemon Blackfire vs. Darien Targaryen II Darien II, a bastard by all accounts, assumed the Iron Throne, which caused an uproar in the Blackfire side of the Targaryen line. This led to an all-out civil war, resulting in the Blackfire suffering a black eye when Daemon and his two eldest sons were slain in the Battle of the Red Grass Field. During this fight, brothers Agor Bittersteel Rivers and Brendan Bloodraven Rivers met in battle for the first time. Bloodraven lost an eye. Bastard Bowl 2 The Battle That Never Was Damon Blackfire II versus Brendan Bloodraven Rivers during the tourney at White Walls in the Riverlands, Bloodraven, acting as Hand of the King, prevented his brother Bitterfield and Daemon II from starting the war, arresting or killing loyalists to the Blackfires and sending Daemon II to the Black Cells in the Red Keep to prevent another Blackfire from being named heir to the Iron Throne. It was at this time Bittersteel founded the Golden Company, which is now the top mercenary company in the world. Leech Lords being difficult? Small folks getting out of pocket. That castle is blocking your view of the sea? Well, the Golden Company is here for all your merc needs. Don't delay, send a raven today and hire the Golden Company for your next siege. Order now and the first catapult is free. Baby not included. This brings us to our current situation as two bastard forces square off for the new seat of contention, the Castle of Winterfell. Stark and Bolton have long been bitter enemies. Boltons would routinely flay Starks and wear them as cloaks in ages past. When the Starks gained power in the north, they brought the Boltons to heel, ending the practice of flaying. The Boltons, however, still practice the barbaric habit within the confines of the Dreadfort. After betraying Robb Stark during the Red Wedding and burning Winterfell, blaming it on Theon Greyjoy, the Boltons are also experts at backstabbing. Roose Bolton, as a reward from Tywin Lannister, was named Warden of the North and given Winterfell. Roose was in turn betrayed and murdered by his bastard son Ramsay, who he officially legitimized. With no other heirs, Ramsay is now Warden of the North and Tenuous Lord of Winterfell. On the other side of this fray is Jon Snow, bastard son of the Honorable Ned Stark. The question of Jon's parentage is in play here until the secret Ned took to his grave is revealed. No point in speculating. However, what's going through Jon's mind? Former Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, Snow was murdered by a small band of brothers for bringing wildlings into Castle Black. Always striving to do what's right, this action got him killed. After being resurrected by the Red Peace Melisandre, John seems to have lost the very thing which made him fight. It was the urging of his half-sister, Sansa, which brings Snow and all his wildling friends to the field. Standing on the edge of battle, our pouty prince of righteousness stares into the abyss, an abyss he has been in, and realizes there is nothing on the other side. Seemingly outnumbered by Bolton forces, what hope is there for Lord Snow? Well, Sister Sansa sent a secret missive to whore-master Uncle Littlefinger, 
who now bends the ear of cousin Sweet Robin, Lord of the Vale. The armies of the Vale are fresh seasoned fighters, and their numbers would swell the ranks of the wildling forces and the few houses still loyal to House Stark. But this reporter thinks there will be no rescue from the Vale. Instead, salvation comes from a house whose colors are red and gold. The Lannisters will swoop in and save the Starks. Recent events in the life of the man with the golden hand, the king-slaying sister-lover, Jamie Lannister, will fulfill a vow made to long-dead Catelyn Stark to save Sansa and see her safe. After a brief reunion with traveling companion Brienne of Tarth, the only person who truly believes Jamie can be a better man may have swayed his plans and delay him a bit longer in returning to his sister effing ways. Instead of leading his army south, they take a detour further north and enter the Battle of Winterfell as a wild card. This wild card, however, is far in left field. Is there anything closer to home that will fit the bill? Perhaps the Mandalays, with Lord too fat to sit a horse, may ramble into the field for House Stark. Or even the infamous Triple Cross, which involves the Karstarks and the Umbers, suddenly turning on the Boltons as they are bloodkin to the Starks, and should hate Boltons more than wildlings. Whatever happens, this will be a battle for the ages. Stark versus Bolton, Bastard Bulls 6, Rumble for Winterfell. Be there or be flayed. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more up to the minute news, reviews, predictions, and speculations.